Last year, Elon Musk conducted a poll. Should I continue to be CEO of Twitter, yay or nay? He ain't lying. Well, the results came in, and they were nay. Bye, Felicia. So being a man of his word, he said, you know what? I'm going to bring in a new CEO. Okay! Well, it turns out that this person works for Klaus Schwab, you know, eats the bucks. What kind of shit is that? I'm Jasper Gonzo, and this... Fuck. Uh-oh. Oh, I see nothing. I was not here. I did not even get up this morning. <laughs> is what's next. <laughs> What's up, everyone? Jazz Braganzo, what's next? Your daily? Of course, this is the weekend edition. Hope you enjoy your Saturday. Me on the East Coast? Well, yeah, it's a little rainy. Twitter. Elon Musk. Ever since Elon Musk took over a little over a year ago in April, things have changed. Are they perfect? Are they great? No, not really, but they're getting there. There's more free speech, especially when it comes to those on the right and, of course, libertarians. He conducted a poll. He was wondering, maybe or maybe not, I should continue to be CEO of Twitter. Well, thousands of respondents chimed in, and they said no. He's got too much on his hands. You know it, Tesla and SpaceX and what have you. So, he said, you know what? I'm going to stick to it. So, being a man of his word, he sought out a CEO. Well, he found one. Linda Yaccarino. Now, you may not know who she is, but it turns out that uh, she works for the WEF, you know, the World Economic Forum, you know, the New World Order under Carl Schwab and Eatsy Bucks. Oh, the f my. And Elon is feeling the heat. Let's take a look. This comes out of Breibart. Elon Musk sparred with new CEO Linda Yaccarino on stage and interview three takeaways from that exchange. Elon Musk sat down in April before the announcement. In an all-stage interview with Linda Yaccarino, an advertising executive he named as Twitter's new chief, new chief executive Friday. Elon Musk sparred with new CEO Linda Yaccarino on stage and interview three takeaways from that exchange by David Hamilton, business reporter of the Associated Press. San Francisco. On Friday, Elon Musk announced that NBC's Universals, and yes, she worked for NBC Universal Comcast. <clears throat> Excuse me. Linda Yaccarino will serve as the new CEO of Twitter. Yaccarino is a longtime advertising executive credited with integrating digitalized ad sales at NBCU. Her challenge now will be to woo back advertisers that have fled Twitter since Musk acquired last year for $44 billion. Since taking ownership, Musk has fired thousands of Twitter employees, yes, 75% of them, largely scrapped and trust and safety team, yes, because they were all trash, and responsible for keeping the site free of hate speech, harassment, misinformation, and blamed others, particularly mainstream media organizations, which he views untrustworthy competitors for Twitter's ad dollars, for exaggerating Twitter's problems. Of course, see the Twitter files. In April, the two met on stage conversation in a marketing convention in Miami. Here are some of the highlights of that conversation. Musk and Yaccarino spar over content moderation. The Miami discussion was cordial, although both participants drew some distinct lines in the sand. On few occasions, Yaccarino uh, steered the conversation towards issues of content moderation and apparent proliferation of hate speech and extremism since Musk took over the platform. She couched her questions in the context of whether Musk could help advertisers feel more welcome to the platform. At one point, she asked Musk if was willing to let advertisers influence his vision for Twitter, explaining that it would help them get more excited about in investing money, product development, ad safety, content moderation. That's what the influence is. Musk slapped her down. Not physically. All right, lefties. It's totally cool to say you want to have your advertising appear in certain places on Twitter, not in others. But it's cool. Uh, but it's not cool to try to say that what Twitter will do. After that means losing advertising dollars, we lose it. But freedom of speech is paramount. Mic drop. Number two. Musk, re uh, Musk repeats, no special influence for advertisers. Yaccarino returned to the issue a few moments later when she asked Musk if he planned to reinstate the company's, quote, influence council, a once regular meeting, and marketing executives from several Twitter's major advisors, Musk again demurred. I would be worried about creating a backlash among the public, he said. Because if it 
public thinks that their views are being determined by, you know, a small number of marketing executives in America. They will be, I think, upset about that. Musk went on to acknowledge that the feedback is important, and he suggests that Twitter should aim for a sensible middle ground that ensures the public, quote, has a voice, while advertisers focus on ordinary work of improving sales and perception of their brands. I agree. Pressing Elon on his own tweets. Number three. Musk didn't pass up the opportunity to sell the assembled marketers a new plan to solve Twitter's uh, problems, objectional tweets, which the company had announced a day before. Musk calls the policy freedom of speech, but not freedom of reach, describing it as a way to limit visibility of hate speech, similar problems, without accurately removing rule-breaking tweets. Yakarina took a swing. Does it apply to your tweets? Musk has a history of posting misinformation and occasionally offensive tweets, often in early morning hours. Musk acknowledged that it does, adding that his tweets uh, can also be tagged with community notes. That provides additional context to tweets. He additioned that his tweets receive no special boost from Twitter. Will you agree to be more specific about tweets after 3 a.m.? Yakarino asked. I will aspire to tweet less after 3 a.m., Musk replied. We go from that to this. Elon Musk reaffirms commitment to free speech amid concerns over a new Twitter CEO. I hear your concerns, but don't judge too early. I am adamant about defending free speech, even if it means losing the monies. We're going to see about that. Twitter boss Elon Musk had been vocal advocate of free speech and open dialogue, so much so that he bought the company for $44 billion last April. Of course, however, concerns have been raised by the public announcement of his new appointment for CEO Twitter, Linda Yaccarino, and her commitment to these principles. Despite these concerns, Musk has reaffirmed his commitment to free speech in a recent tweet response to activist Billboard Chris, who has been phenomenal against the trans sanity. During our interview with you, she was more excited about your initiative to limit free speech tweets, which are deemed hateful. Freedom of speech, not freedom of reach. In fact, it was her main selling point to the advertiser execs in the audience, as she kept coming back to. Quote, I hear your concerns, but don't judge too early. I am adamant about defending free speech, even if it means losing the dough. No doubt that she'll bring in advertising revenue in short term, but she's a long-term mistake, Billboard Chris Tweet it back. I hear your concerns, but don't judge too early. Yakarina's appointment as new CEO of Twitter lets them to express concerns about her commitment to free speech principles that Musk holds dear. Mario Nafwa, new CEO of Twitter, Linda Yakarino, potential new CEO for Twitter, executive at NBC World, and holds a position at World Economic Forum. Hey everybody, Linda Yakarino here, class of 1980. We're not here to talk about that. We are here to talk about masking up or packing up. I promise you, we're doing good so far. Just keep your distance, get your hands washed often, get tested often, and wear your mask. That'll get us closer and closer to normal days. We are resilient. We are tough. Keep doing it. And we'll be back at Beaver Stadium before you know it. Mask up or pack up. We're almost there. We are. It's not the issue of her working for NBC Comcast. No. Of course, she was in charge of advertising, uh, advertising and bringing in the dollars. I understand that. But when you work for a organization that has been draped in, com in uh, controversial and conspiracies as the World Economic Forum, and when you have someone like Klaus Schwab who put out a lovely video. If you haven't seen it, look it up on YouTube in regards to uh, the Great Reset. I've got a problem with that. 
millions of people around the world have a problem with the World Economic Forum. And then we have Klaus Schwab running around saying, eat the bugs, because of course, you know, the hell with you meat eaters. We've got a problem. When you have an organization who is looking to uh, conduct policy, not through congressional means, not through, uh, it's about us. We will conduct political policy for all countries involved, including the U.S., who has, stand, who has stood by a little piece of paper called the Constitution for, you know, for 240 plus years. So there's the problem. Uh, you had a lot of response come out regarding Yaccarino's hiring, saying that being that she works for the WEF disqualifies her for being CEO of a company that espouses free speech or heading towards that um, middle ground that everybody can say what they want and of course you know the the repercussions would be minimal well speaking of i just got booted off of twitter yesterday so i'm off for the next six days on my main account why because there was a woman who decided to take a selfie of her hoo-ha of her vag and i call her a skanky ass hoe well it wasn't the skanky it wasn't the ass it was the hoe that got me booted off because of quote hate speech twitter still has a long way to go but regarding yakarino's hiring a lot of people want to say wait and see wait and see including elon himself so i do so with reluctancy and with that being said i'm jasper gonzo this is what's next want to see more just like this please leave a comment below like it share it subscribe to it hit the notification bell so you guys never miss a thing and we'll see you next time. Peace.